Alright, we're here to talk about the Windrider 17 rudder. So, at the very least, you want to reduce some of the drag. You want to go ahead and make some washers go up underneath this rudder right here because you've got this gap. So you want to make some washers right here out of some plastic. Get a Harbor Freight hole saw kit and uh, you drill that hole first in the center, but you just drill the the hole for the, that the drill bit goes in. Do the outside first, then come back in and do the, the center. And you can make these washers to go up, up in, under here to go ahead and lessen the gap. These rudders right here, after a while, they just flop around. It'll give you weather helm. You don't want that. You want to you want to get it fixed in the right position. This one here's already been fixed with bolts in here, but you got water that's going to come by here and cause drag. So that's a good temporary fix. We bought two rudders from uh, Windrider, and they're either puffed out or sucked in. The quality of them from Windrider is not that good. If we look at the profile of the uh, rudder, I'm going to show you. If you look at this rudder right here, it doesn't have any kind of good shape. Here's the rudder that I made for it. This weighs two pounds versus six pounds of the old rudder. The new rudders are 3.8 pounds. So this is a pound and eight, almost two pounds lighter than the stock rudder. This is the second rudder that I made. If you notice, I went ahead and eliminated the, the gap. If you look at it, there's hardly a gap. When this rudder is on the boat and hooked up to the car or on the trailer you have eight inches of ground clearance so that you won't be dragging your rudder along the road. That was the problem with this first rudder that I'd made. I made it so long that when the trailer is on the uh, attached to the car it's so close to the road plus you can't put it on the boat with it sitting on the trailer unless you jack the trailer up about six inches then this longer rudder will work fine these rudders haven't been tested yet because uh, I just completed them so they're made out of uh, two inch foam I got this pink foam right here and uh, I cover it with a layer of uh, mat and uh, if you're going to use polyester resin here's one that I cut out and uh, I was going to use polyester resin and I covered it in, in packing tape so that it wouldn't eat the foam up because your polyester resin will eat the foam up. If you use epoxy, you don't have to worry about that. But you go ahead and you just wrap it in uh, in this packing tape right here, and you can put your mat over top of it. This is the shape of the of the new rudder with the profile section on there. These are the profile sections that I use to go ahead and make the rudder with. And the first one I did I made out of wood and uh, when I used a foam wire cutter to go ahead and cut it out it seemed like it was dragging I couldn't get a real smooth cut. The smoother cut that you can get the better off you are 
because it'll leave less ridges and then less work that you'll have to do later on. So these holes right here so you can pin it into the side of the foam. So you just pin it in there like that and then you run your foam cutter over top of it and that'll give you your shape. And if you got It'll be bigger here and smaller down here since I wanted a tapered rudder, not one that was square. If you notice it, it's tapered. This here is the foam cutter that I made. And uh, I got the Nico Chrome wire off of, uh, off of eBay, and it's 28 gauge. And I used a power supply from an old printer. It's 12 volts by 2 amps. And it just plugs into your, uh, your 110 outlet. So it says it is the output on it. It's 12 volts at 2 amps. And that heats up that wire so it, it cuts that foam like butter. The, you have to practice a little bit and you can get smoother cuts the more that you practice. So when you're, when you're glassing this, you're not going to be able to get it really smooth with just the, uh, the mat, the fiberglass mat. And so I use all this white that you see down here is uh, I use colloidal silica uh, thickener in my epoxy. And then uh, that helped me go ahead and, and get all these edges smooth. And there's a lot of sanding to do. When you first start, you see some ridges. Sometimes it's easier to go ahead and just mix up another batch, put that colloidal silica in there, and then just go ahead and... and uh, run it over there to get rid of the ridges and then it'll you'll get a nice smooth surface on there let me show you what this uh oh let's see so the post right here is made out of a painter's stick So this is a painter's stick right here, which is the same diameter as the original Wind Rider rudder. So if you look at it, here's my profile that I ended up with. So the, the painter's pole that I used is going to be... about 21 inches. Cut it a little bit longer, fit to, you know, put all this in here. This is seven inches in here. Then go ahead and put it up in here on your boat, and then uh, you can cut down the final height of the pole later. That way you can adjust for the gap that you have in between the boat. The uh, final length on this rudder, the max that you'll probably be able to get is gonna be right about 21 inches long any longer than that you're not going to be able to put it on the, like the trailer's not hooked up to the car right now and I can I can just barely get it on get the rudder on there when it when it's hooked up to the car you have eight inches of clearance So we're, we're about to do some testing on it to see how well this rudder is going to work. And I, I think it's going to work a whole lot better than the, the stock one. And then uh, I'll fix this uh, plug up really good and probably make a mold out of it. And uh, I've got a friend that's got a wind rider. I'm sure he's going to want one. And uh, yeah, we'll let you know how it works.